Hello and welcome to SAP on Microsoft Azure. This is the first series of a number of videos I plan around how Azure supports resilience for SAP applications. This is just an overview. There will be a number of subsequent videos released on the individual technologies. To start with, we're going to look at the various types of disasters that may impact operations of an SAP environment. The next part will cover the single point of failures of an SAP NetViva based application. And then we will gonna look at how Azure supports the resilience of SAP application and improve the availability. At the end, we're gonna have a quick look at the service levels. Many organizations use SAP applications to run the most business critical business processes. Hence, any planned or unplanned downtime comes at a high cost, which is why most organizations try to avoid any downtime or any impact to business operations. Now, when we look at resilience and try to define resilience, resilience is not about avoiding downtime altogether because that will not be possible. It is about how we react to it. And Microsoft distinguishes clearly between high availability, disaster recovery and backup. When we have a look at the types of disasters that may impact the operations of an SAP system, we usually look at the following. Human errors are the most common one where an operator, for example, would delete vital SAP data that would leave the system in an unusable state. Also common are application failures where, for example, parts of a NetViva application stack becomes unavailable or simply freezes. Um, also common are host failures where the underlying host infrastructure of an SAP system or of a virtual machine has a critical error and becomes unresponsive. More severe types of disasters are rack failures, which usually impact not just one system but multiple. For example, if the rack contained also storage and network components and not only compute. Data center disasters usually impact the entire data center. There could be, for example, a natural disaster such as a storm or also um, water that will bring down a data center. Finally, metropolitan disasters that impact a whole metropolitan area, as in a city, are disasters such as earthquakes or similar magnitude that may impact not just one data center but multiple data centers. So as a summary, different types of disasters have different types of impact to an SAP system. From small impacts such as a user accidentally delete data out of an SAP system to a full metropolitan failure where an entire city becomes unavailable, we need to protect the SAP systems in an appropriate way. Now, before we have a look at how Microsoft Azure supports the resilience of SAP applications, let's have a quick look at how SAP NetViva applications are structured and how they respond to user requests. A user request normally hits the central services, the message server, from which it gets an app server signed. The app server dispatches the user request to a work process. The work process communicates with the database and delivers the response to the user. A different user may hit the same application server or a different application server. Now from this picture it's very easy to see the single point of failures are the central services as well as the database because these two components are only available once. So the most simple way that SAP offers is to make these two components highly available in an active passive mode. Hence, as the primary instance becomes unavailable, it simply switches over to the HA instance and removes the single point of failure from these two components. Now, let's have a look at how Microsoft Azure supports the resilience of SAP applications. And just to remember, this is an overview session. We're not going to take a deep dive here. The deep dive will come in subsequent sessions. Now, if we look at an SAP NetViva based system, the components we need to consider are obviously 
the application service as well as the central services, which obviously run in a virtual machine. But since these components of an SAP system are not transactional, as in, for example, a database, we usually can cover these components through a simple snapshot of the virtual machine. The database itself, the SAP database, for example, Sybase or Microsoft SQL or even HANA, obviously more, way more critical, and they need to be covered through database-specific backup procedures and technologies. Obviously, SQL Server integrates quite neatly into Microsoft Azure, but for example, also for HANA, Microsoft currently tests a backend integration, which will ease the backup, the online backup of SAP HANA and makes it a lot simpler. Another component we shouldn't forget is uh, the transport directory, which could be an NFS or an SMB share, which we obviously need to regularly back up to ensure that we keep our transport history and the various transports. Now, another scenario we need to protect SAP application against is the failure of a uh, critical SAP components, such as, for example, for NetViva applications, the central services or the database system. We usually protect SAP apps against these sort of failures with a cluster service that clusters the central service or the database system itself. Now, on Microsoft Azure, we have a number of cluster solutions supported. For example, one would be SUSE Pacemaker, another one would be Microsoft Cluster Services. Another scenario we need to protect SAP application against is the failure of a virtual machine on the underlying host infrastructure. Most public clouds use self-healing technology in order to restart the virtual machine on a healthy note if this happens. So if the virtual machine fails or the physical node that runs the virtual machine, the fabric will just move the virtual machine to a healthy node, restart it, and the server becomes available again. Usually the impact to an SAP system is rather low, just a couple of minutes. In the beginning of this video, we discussed the scenario that not even just a single plate may fail, but a full rack. In this case, the impact of an SAP environment would be much severe than just a single blade which may impact a single system, but a full rack may impact multiple systems. In order to protect SAP applications, Microsoft Azure offers availability sets, which give us the option to spread an SAP or the components of an SAP system across multiple hardware racks. That way, we can not only increase um, the protection against unplanned downtime, but also against planned downtime because the impact to the service would be just a single component and not the entire system. Another disaster we need to protect SAP application against is the failure of a complete data center. Similar to other cloud services, Microsoft Azure offers availability zones in order to cover this sort of disaster. What we see here is basically an SAP application which is spread across two availability zones within a single region in an active-active scenario. The third availability zone is currently not utilized and it could be used, for example, for a SUSE cluster for the storage block device. Please note that for Microsoft Azure, availability zones are not available in every region yet or in every geography. So you should check before deployment whether availability zones are already deployed in the specific geography. And finally, let's have a look at regional or metropolitan failures. Microsoft Azure covers these sort of disasters through region pairs. And when we have a quick look at Microsoft terminology, a geography consists of usually a region pair, the primary region and the secondary region. And if we look at, um, for example, the geography Australia, we see that there's um, Australia East, which is Sydney, and Australia Southeast, which is Melbourne, as the region pair. So, for example, for Sydney customers, Melbourne could be the disaster recovery site, or the other way around. For SAP workload, we would use Azure Site Recovery to protect the SAP application service and the central services component of SAP. 
We cover Azure Site Recovery in one of the subsequent videos I will provide in the near future. And the database specific um, replication methodology would be a database specific option to replicate a database to a disaster recovery site. There could be, for example, um, Microsoft SQL Server always on, or it could be HANA system replication. Now, if we map all the various technologies that we have looked in the previous slides onto SAP and put them into the context of SLAs, we'll get the following picture. A single virtual machine that's using premium storage, which is solid state disk based storage delivers an SLA of three ninths, which is 99.9%. .9%. Availability sets, which would be an SAP system having more than one application server and these two application servers or more would be distributed um, in an availability set would deliver three nines and a five across all the virtual machines. Availability zones would deliver four nines of availability of a virtual machine that is stretched across two or more availability zones. Keep in mind, this is really across the availability zones. And finally, disaster recovery options that we saw from one region or metropolitan area to the other will give you the disaster recovery options that SAP requires in case a metropolitan area becomes unavailable. So much for this high level overview on Azure Resilience for SAP applications. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look exactly on how we can configure Azure services to improve resilience, such as HJ, hey disaster recovery options, and so on. We hope you enjoyed the video and um, we'll hope to see you back soon. Thanks for watching.